Hi, this is Roy Bolaños. On this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to model a MOSFET using an a Excel spreadsheet. Uh, previously, I had done a video uh, on the same subject using MathCAD, and here I have a PDF file with the equations that I use uh, in MathCAD to model. Uh, the MOSFET and then get the parameters of the VTO, KP and then uh, the capacitance values uh, CGO, G, CGSO and CGDO. So with those f uh, four parameters you can get a first order um, uh, model of your MOSFET. However, in my case I upgraded my computer and I uploaded or uh, tried to load MathCAD and for some reason I cannot get it to be activated so I'm stuck without MathCAD and recently I had a need to model a MOSFET and the one that I'm trying to model or was trying to model is this one this is a new uh, P channel fed that came out it's a P channel they have the data sheet but unfortunately they still don't have the spice model available so this is a unique situation where you can uh, use uh, my spreadsheet to get a, a uh, model uh, that is close enough to get some useful work now when you do the model what you're looking for is scroll to where you get the ID versus VDS curve so we're going to be using this curve or family of curves to extract uh, VTO and KP and then the other set of data that we need which gives you the AC performance are these these are the parameters that you'll be looking for which are the input capacitance CISS output capacitance, output capacitance COSS and the reverse transfer uh, transfer capacitance CRSS so these are the the capacitance that you need to input into the uh, spreadsheet S so once I have that I want to go ahead and explain a little bit what is it that I'm looking for so to model this particular uh, MOSFET uh, it's a P channel and then what you want to do is you want to get two curves in this case I'm I'm getting this curve this is the VGS curve and this is a VGS of negative 4 volts the next curve is negative 4.5 5 6 and 7 so once I have my two curves, in this case it's going to be the negative 4 and then in this case the negative 7 what I want to do is I want to get the, the, the current at that particular uh, VGS for that curve and the current of the drain at that particular uh, spot as well so those two spots actually line up with VDS of 10 so this that's what basically what you do so in this case this spot would be a VGS 2 of negative 7 and I kind of interpolated to be about 275 amps basically you go to this uh, horizontally and you look at the vertical axis and then for VGS 1 which is negative 4 
look up here that's 10 20 so I pick close to 20 you could put 22 and so forth but that's probably good enough so basically these these two measurements are input here so in this case a VGS of 4 and what I'm doing is I get the absolute value so I'll drop the negative and so I'll put a 4 there and then the drain at that particular point is 20 and then here is negative 7 so I'll put a absolute 7 volts and then 275 275 so once we have that then KP KP and BTO are calculated so let me show you if I change this to 3 volts see these change so go back to 4 so this is a spice parameter VTO your threshold voltage and this is your KP is your transconductance parameter so these two determine your DC characteristics of your MOSFET. Then the other piece of data that you need is your capacitance. You enter those values here and it generates the AC spice parameters that will determine the AC characteristics of your MOSFETs. And these are the two parameters that it calculates. So those are then, you can put them in a syntax or the spiced syntax, which is a dot model, the name, PMOS, and then parentheses, and then you type in the, the, these parameters, you put them in this order, and then you can copy that. You can copy them into spice, and I'll show they're copied here and then you should be able to to duplicate the family of curves now there is something new that I added that's different and I want to point this fact out if you notice that these have a uh, upward slope so that is determined by another parameter called lambda so this is something new that I've added so there's a formula here and basically the formula calculates what the slope of this is and from the slope we calculate RO and we can calculate lambda so let me show and demonstrate that if you don't define lambda instead of having a slope you end up with a, 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 ver, a horizontal uh, curve so I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more zeros here okay I'm gonna add three more zeros so basically it makes lambda very very small and if I run it see so the curves are flat so this means that that the MOSFET is operating as a ideal current source in reality during this section of the curves it should have a little slope because it should be modeled as a current source in parallel with RO the output impedance of the MOSFET. So if we set this to the same parameter which is 0 0.01724 0 .0, get rid of these and not then run it again so now you see that it's got the little curve upward slope so that's what you want this is something new that I just added 
and here's a, a comparison let me ex see if I can expand that can I and if you see the the X and the Y's are the same very very similar or very close to modeling the actual curves that you have on your uh, data sheet okay so how do I extract lambda so this is the way you do it or at least I do it so in this case I look for the curve that probably has the most steepest uh, slope in this case I'm using a v, uh, the curve for the VGS 1 which is negative 4 and then what I'm doing is I'm picking what I refer to the beginning and I'm going to refer to this point where the voltage is 1 and what you want to do is you want to pick this flat straight you don't want to pick a point in this region because this is the triode region once it deflects down that's the, the, the triode or the ohmic region you want the ones that are kind of fa fairly flat with the slope so in this case I think it's convenient to start at that point which is a VDS of 1 volt and then kind of calculate or estimate what the current would be so I'm I'm setting this point to 1 volt 17 so in this case I put V begin begin as 1 volt and ID begin as 17 volts then I get a second point basically to calculate the slope once I get the inverse slope of this which is rho the output impedance then you, it, it'll calculate lambda here I'm using the end point and I'm saying that this end point is 30 volts and then the current is about 27 so with these four points I can input them in here and once I input them in here the uh, the spreadsheet will calculate the lambda and then this lambda you can copy it into your spice model and you're good to go and uh, ready to do a uh, simulation now if you find this uh, video informative and if you have a need for this uh, Excel spreadsheet you can email me at rbola35618 at aol.com and I will send you a copy of this spreadsheet uh, remember uh, keep in mind that this is uh, a spreadsheet is based from a previous uh, video where I use MathCat and if you don't have MathCat then this is a very good uh, uh, way to model using uh, Excel if you like subscribe thumbs up and share thank you for watching